We're in May's Landing in the congressman's dis district office, his congressional district office. Jeff Andrew, thanks for joining us. It's my pleasure to be with you. It's been 11 days since you announced you were becoming a Republican. What's been the reaction here in southern New Jersey? It's been extraordinary, actually. Um, you know, I, I've been really pleased with how many people have been so positive. So it's a little bit tough if you go dining out on rare occasion and want to go to the local diner or if you're just going to go to a store or whatever, because people have been so kind. Many people have come to me, Republicans and Democrats, and they've said, we are proud of you. We're proud of the courage that you showed. Um, we're proud of what you've done. And the reason, Michael, isn't so much that everybody necessarily wanted me to become a Republican. It was also because people think that certain things aren't right in the political process. And they believe that I looked at that right in its face and made a decision to say it isn't right and I'm going to do something about it. Impeachment isn't right? Is that Well, impeachment in this case isn't right, but let me go back to really how this started. So, um, you know, I'm a believer, and I have been for my whole life, that sometimes there's a sign. Something is there that shows you you should do something differently or that you should make a bold move or make a move. And so I was speaking with, he has to speak with me, the local chairman of the Republican Party uh, in, the, in the county of Atlantic. Now, as you know, um, I have over 90 towns and eight counties and 40, about 40% 40 of the state of New Jersey is in my district. It is the largest district and has, again, a lot of towns and you meet with a lot of folks. So I, I'm always glad to do that. And I met with the chairman of Atlantic, the uh, Democratic chairman of Atlantic. Is that Mike Suleman? That is Michael, yes. And he said, I just want to let you know something. And I said, sure, you know, and basically he said, you're going to vote for impeachment. And I said, no, I'm not. I have my reasons, and I believe they're valid, and we can speak about those in a moment. I said, but, you know, I appreciate your input, but no, I'm not doing that. And his point was that, well, if you don't do it, you're not going to get the line. And I think a lot of folks may or may not know what the line is, but it's the, the part of the ballot that you get where you're running with everybody that's part of the mainstream group. And he says, you're not going to get the line. In fact, I'm going to do everything I can to make sure that you can't even run in Atlanta County or don't have any real opportunity. Uh, let me say I think I could have. I know a lot of people in Atlanta County, and I have a lot of supporters, and I might even have a few more supporters uh, than Michael realizes and maybe than he has. But that isn't the point. That was a real sign to me. I, I didn't. I said. I talked to him a little bit about it then. He's very young, right? He's, He's very young. Thirty years old. Thirty some years old. Yes. Uh, young and he guy. He said, "You can't win a Democratic primary." Uh, I, well, he said that afterward. Afterward, uh, but he said, "I can't run in a Democratic primary. I won't have the right to run in the primary, or he'll do all that he can, even though I am an incumbent congressman." That I won't get the and line. And that chased you out of the party? Uh, yeah. No, that didn't chase me out of the party. That was one piece of a number of issues over time that have chased me out of the party. So let's talk about impeachment a little bit. I think that's yes. what you want to speak about. Impeachment is serious business. Uh, it, you know, in our history, as you know, it's only happened three times. In our history, very bright men that loved America, like de Tocqueville, spoke about how impeachment rarely should be used and never should be used because you don't like a president. Is as you've heard and we've all heard many times, high crimes, treason, those types of issues. So the reality is that we've never had an actual situation where there was an impeachment where the individual president was found guilty. And there is a reason for that, because it is disenfranchising the voters. Whether you love the president or don't like the president isn't the issue here. The issue is that millions upon millions of people lose their vote if a president is impeached, and it must be for the very most serious reasons. So do you think that <clears throat> President Trump, in his relation with the president of Ukraine and his withholding military aid, uh, and asking for an investigation of the Bidens was inappropriate but doesn't rise to the level of impeachment? 
Well, I would say a couple of things. It doesn't rise to the level of impeachment, number one. Number two, he didn't withhold the military aid. The military aid flowed. Number three, uh, the investigation never took place. Impeachment can't be, gee, somebody wanted to do something or we think they wanted to do something. You are physically taking the president of the United States and removing him from office. It damn well better be something really serious and really important and really bad. This does not rise up to it. And most people that you speak to, at least the people on the street and some scholars as well, think this is a very weak impeachment, which is, I assume, why now they're not actually transferring the papers and we're, I don't know if we're going to go back and try to impeach a second time. Let me tell you the kind of conversations I've had where people have come to me. I've had people, including Congress people, say he's just an unpleasant person. We don't like him. People don't like him. He did some things here or there or everywhere. He needs to be impeached. That absolutely has nothing to do with impeachment. And we should realize what impeachment is. It is a very cumbersome and very serious tool that is only used for very, very serious issues. So We're mean, doing the wrong thing here. You're doing the wrong They're thing. They're doing the wrong Congress thing. Congress is yes. doing the wrong thing. Yes. The House is doing the, the wrong thing. The House is doing the wrong thing. Uh, if Congress had decided to censure the president instead of impeach him, uh, might you still be a Democrat? Um, I, I don't know. I can't. You never can do might have been. So I, I, I really can't say life is an amazing thing. However, that would have been more appropriate. Um, it, you know, if you disagree with something that a president does, you can censure him, any president. Um, however, th this is, was not what they did, obviously. What they did was the impeachment route. And, you know, it was interesting because in the beginning, uh, the speaker, Nancy Pelosi, absolutely said the impeachment should be bipartisan. A real impeachment, the thing that happened, is so bad that obviously Republicans and Democrats are going to join together. This was a partisan impeachment. It was only on one side. Um, she also said that it should be something that is rarely, if ever, used. And I'm paraphrasing a little bit, she but said, pretty close to she it. She said the evidence has to be over, overwhelming. Overwhelming. And this is just not, it's not overwhelming evidence. It's not an overwhelming issue. Um, and it does so much harm. Look what it does and is doing, Michael, to our country. It's splitting people apart. People are using hate language. Let me tell you a story. Lady comes up to me and she says, you know what? I want to say something about you. And I said, what? She says, well, I want to tell you that you don't have, you, you're, you're not doing this right. And I said, this was before I decided to make my move. She said, you don't have enough hate in your heart. And I looked at her and she said, you don't hate the president enough? and you don't hate Republicans enough. Michael, I have, you've known me for years. I do have a habit of liking all people uh, within normal reason. And we are now taking our country and we're splitting it apart and we're fractioning it and we're actually creating situations where people hate and hurt each other talk, for this reason. You're talking about people who speak ill of the president. Uh, <clears throat> 10 days ago, the Daily Beast published an article uh, citing two Democratic, unnamed Democratic individuals who said they were in a room with you when you called the president crazy and unfit. For, uh, I never used those words. I, I, unfit I never, to serve. I, I, I never said unfit or undeserved. I absolutely did not. You know, I, 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 I just don't, it's not even my speech pattern. When I, you know, unfit for unfit service. Unfit for office was unfit the phrase. Unfit for office. I never said that. And, uh, Tom Moran, the columnist for the Star-Ledger, who was highly critical of your party switch, vote that, uh, wrote that you told him back in November that your biggest political fear was seeing Trump reelected. Re I don't think I quite said that either, that that was my biggest political fear. I think what I said was this whole process, I, many people's fear, not mine, obviously, is that he would be, this is what I was alluding to, that he could get elected again. So there are individuals out there that are so afraid the president's going to get reelected that they think they should use impeachment as a tool. That's really what I was talking You're about. You're saying they're impeaching him because they can. They're impeaching him because they can. They're impeaching him because they're afraid he may win reelection. 
But that's not what impeachment's for. They're impeaching him because they don't like him, maybe. They're impeaching him because they disagree with his values or think he did something before. Somebody said to me one time, you know, when he was in Atlantic City, he did X, Y, and Z, and that's why he has to be impeached. That has nothing to do with impeachment. Michael, we must understand our history and our Constitution. Impeachment never should be used unless it's an extreme situation. And I'll tell you what's going to happen. And mark my word, and we'll both be there and we'll see it and we'll talk about it. What's going to happen is someday there is going to be the other party will be elected and the Republicans will be in control and there will be people within the Republican Party that are going to want to impeach just in the reverse way. And I don't think that that's good either. Impeachment is, I, I didn't even like the Clinton impeachment, and that was, uh, he, he lied before, you know, in Congress, but I still didn't like so it. So many Democrats in the state have been wildly critical of what you've done here. That's a surprise. Governor Murphy called it pathetic. Senate President Sweeney said, Jeff is for Jeff, and he called it a betrayal. What's your, what's your, what do you think when you read things like that? I think people have rights to make decisions in their life and to deal with, you know, their own lives and their own politics and their public policy in the way that they think is appropriate. I think what is pathetic and unfortunate whenever people rely on calling people names or saying mean things about them. So I'm going to surprise you here, but I don't think so because you know me. I'm not going to say anything about them. I'm going to talk about the fact that I feel that I did the right thing, and I'll let the voters decide. And if the voters decide to reelect me, um, then, you know, I will be a happy man and do my best. And I think they will. And from all the signs we've seen, they will. We just had two people right before you were here um, from a very urban area, and we were talking about some of the issues that are coming up, and both of them said to me, I just want to let you know, I don't care if you're a Republican or Democrat. I'm voting for you because you're Jeff Van Drew. That's always been my history. I never came to you in an interview and said, vote for me because I'm a Democrat. Vote for me because I'm a Republican. Vote for me because you think I have value, because I'm going to try to do the right thing, because I'm going to try to do good. One of the things I used to hate the most in the old days when I would go out and knock on doors, uh, some people would say, I'm not going to vote for you because you're a Democrat, and I never vote for Democrats. And that kind of hurt my feelings. But oddly enough, what also would hurt my feelings when people would say, I'm not going to vote for you because uh, I'm, I am going to vote for you. I am going to vote for you because you are a Democrat. You don't even have to talk to me and tell me what you think. You're a Democrat. I'm voting for you. you. Didn't like I that. didn't like that either. Vote for or against me because of who I am, what my policies are, and how hard I've worked for you. You're joining a party uh, full of climate deniers, starting from the top on down. Uh, how do you reconcile your environmental record with that of national Republicans who are rejecting the idea of climate change? Um, I was very clear to everyone when I spoke about the fact of changing that, you know, that there would be some things that we disagree on. People should disagree. That's a natural, normal, and good thing. Um, I believe that climate change is an issue. I believe we should deal with the issue intelligently. I don't believe in the, uh, what is it, the Green New Deal, because I think we can really hurt and destroy our economy. I think we can have a good economy, a good business climate, and deal with climate change. With and Trump the in the issues. White House, we can deal with, with climate I, change? I, I hope that we can. I hope that maybe I will influence him a little bit. I don't know, but we're, we're going to find out. Um, I think that that is the goal of any congressperson, to listen to their constituents, to try to affect change, and to even work with a president to see, you know, what ideas you can agree on and work on together and what ideas you may differ upon. That's healthy and normal. But, you know, to say that all Republicans disagree with climate change is not true either. Even some of the major climate change bills have been sponsored by Republican Congress people. So the president said he would come campaign for you. He even said maybe in January. You expect him in? I, I would imagine the, the president will be here sometime in January or February, yes. You know that he will? I mean, they, they've I, told I, you he will, he, will, he will? He will be here. Okay. And that will be good for your campaign. I, I, this, this district is pro-Trump, correct? Well, let me explain something from the beginning. Any president any president 
that honors your district and your towns by coming to visit your towns as the President of the United States, it is an honor, whether they are Republican or Democrat, whether you agree with them or not. It is an honor for our district, for our country district, our district that's a little bit out of the way. You know, we're not right next to Manhattan and we're not right next to all the big, powerful urban areas. I think it's amazing that he's coming here um, to support our people and to support me. And that doesn't mean you have to agree with everything that he does, but it does mean that you should be honored to have the President of the United States be here. What kind of formal paperwork do you have to <clears throat> fill out in order to switch parties? Do you? It, it's pretty simple, really. What do you do? It's an amazing thing. So all you have to do to switch parties if you are registered in a party. So I was a registered Democrat, and you fill out a form. It's small. It's about that big. And you just say that you're now a Republican, and you sign it. And that's and it. send it to the county clerk's county office? clerk's office. Yes. If you are an undeclared person, which most people in elected office are not, but if you're undeclared, which means you haven't declared a party, all you have to do is on, on primary day go in and say that I want to declare as a Republican or a Democrat. Uh, do you have to write a letter to Nancy Pelosi and to Kevin McCarthy saying I've switched parties? Um, not that I know of, and I still owe Nancy Pelosi a meeting, which I will do. And I did speak to uh, the majority leader, the Democratic majority leader, uh, Steny Hoyer, and did tell him. And he was very much a gentleman. He says, I don't agree with what you've done, but I wish you luck. Have you switched you seats see. in the House of Representatives? Well, see, you know, in the House, which is really interesting, at, we're both so familiar with the state Senate, um, where you sit in a particular spot with a nice name tag, and that's where you sit all the time. In the House, you can sit anywhere you want to. Oh. So I always sat sort of towards the back because I kind of like to watch everything that's going on. And I, a lot of the blue dogs would all sit sort of in a row in the back area where I was as well. Um, sometimes I'd go over to be friendly and sit on the Republican side. Sometimes Republicans who are friendly will come and sit on the Democratic side. There literally is an aisle. You're in the aisle, and they literally can cross the aisle. So you're crossing the aisle for good. You're crossing the Rubicon. There's no going back. Any second thoughts? No. I, I, I really believe for a lot of reasons. Let me, may, may I tell you a couple of quick stories? Quick. Um, I'll make them quick. So one, I did a couple bills, and this was actually in the legislature. And you might think they were trite or not important or not serious, but I did. And one of them was that anybody at any time could place the American flag as long as it was done with honor and dignity in the way that it should be done. Because there had, and I have the picture somewhere around here when it was signed into law, oddly enough, even in New Jersey. Um, and it was actually Governor McGreevy who signed it into law um, that the flag could be flown even in a condominium complex, even if the manager said you can't do it. And the second, I did that bill, and around the same time I did a bill, it's interesting, based on case law, that said you could put, in God we trust, anywhere in a public or private building. That's law in New Jersey. People don't realize it, but it's law in New Jersey. From the Democratic Party, I actually got from a lot of Democrats, and not all. There's a lot of Democrats that don't feel this way. But from a good number, they said this was such trite, unimportant legislation that it meant nothing. Why was I wasting my time? The flag doesn't really signify importance anymore. Uh, in God we trust is inappropriate, doesn't signify any importance anymore. And I guess that was one of the times. You know, you get these signs. I'm not saying it's the only legislation that you do. I'm not even saying it's the most important. But to me, it is important. I believe in that flag, and I believe in God, and I believe it's, this country was based on certain principles. And I always did. I did as a Democrat, and there are Democrats that do. But I really got a hard time for that. I speak about American exceptionalism, how this is an exceptional nation like none other in the world, and I would be criticized. Republican, uh, Republican Congressman Jeff Andrew, we're out of time. But thank you so much for inviting us into your office.